So in practicing Buddhism, the most important thing is to put it into practice. And there is way, there is a way. There are ways until you reach an enlightenment. And it, when you truly, when you truly enlighten and true, have true attainments, then there are no ways and no means and skills. You're just like an observer, like a master now. It's just an observer on the sideline. You're cultivating. Why? It's just like this. There's a Mr. Wang sitting in a restaurant for a long time, and the waitress did not uh, give him a service. And after he sat for an hour, he stood up and told the manager of the restaurant, am I sitting on the observer seat? So what is this observer seat? It's when you have attainments and then you look at the world. You use the eyes or the views of the, an observer. If something is laughable, you would laugh. And if something is pitiful, then you would have sympathy toward them. That's how Grand Master is today. That I have feelings toward circum any circumstances. Then I would have sympathy toward the pitiful things, and I would laugh at the laughable things. And in studying Buddha Dharma, you need to put it into real practice. And then in the future, you can move from the uh, cultivating, cultivation seat to the observer seat. I don't know whether this would be a better explanation of this Huineng's verse. Think about it. In this world, there are a lot of things that we could, did not imagine. You only know it when you experience it. And what you experience, only you would know. So it's like the Chinese saying that you only know how the water tastes only when you drink the water. What you see me? <laughs> what you see me? He is always looking at me. He is very surprised. Oh, that your wife is like water, but your mistress is like ice cream. You are cleaning, you will meet water. You drink water. So, uh, it tastes, water tastes different from ice cream. Water has benefits, but does ice cream have benefits? Think about it, water and ice cream. They are both made of water. One is tasteless, and w the other one is tasty. One is needed all the time, and the other one is something that you enjoy from time to time. One is very rich, and the other one is very bland. One is lasting and the other one is temporary. So I use this two as an analogy 
to the two verses that we were talked about, that we talked about. I don't know whether it's right or not. Ponder upon it. In reality, the verse of the Sixth Patriarch is different from the verse of the Zen Master Wolun. Definitely different. And where is the difference? Let me give you another analogy. When we were young, we watched the movie Tarzan. Which is very strong, and the story was that Tarzan was taking a bath and swimming on a pond, and then when he went off the water, there were a bunch of monkeys on the trees. When they saw Tarzan was uh, rising from the water, the monkeys was laughing was rolling on the ground laughing so hard and then asked why because the monkey says oh no there's a tail that's growing in front and the tail is so short monkeys are different from human beings so telling this example is to tell you that the verse of the Zen Master Wolun is like that monkeys. And the verse of the Sixth Patriarch is that of Tarzan. They are different. So, what is it's the same and what is different. These are examples and analogies. I don't know whether you would <laughs> comprehend it. Because this is really very difficult to explain. We all know one is about enlightenment and the other one is not. The enlightenment verse Everything is beyond nature and the non-enlightenment verse is limited, restricted, it has framework. That's why I feel that in such hot days I should wear swim trunk sitting sitting here so there are two statements that you should remember that I have said before it's a statement that you would say twice in your lifetime at the wedding day you would say I can't believe that I marry you About 30, 40, 50 years later, he would say the same statement. I can't believe that I marry you. The same statement, but two meanings, two different environments, two realms. So the sixth patriarch said, I don't understand Buddha Dharma. But this is the statement that he said after he had attainments. I don't understand Buddha Dharma. So this verse is talking about that I don't know how to use any means and skills. Prior to enlightenment, we all use Buddha Dharma. Today, in performing Homa, that's a ritual. I use Buddha Dharma or Dharma practices. But once you true have true attainments and you are truly enlightened, you don't need any special actions or rituals. Everything is Buddha Dharma or Dharma practices. 
everything would go according to your wishes. So think about it. The wish fulfilling wheel Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, does he still need the wish fulfilling wheel? Does he still wish for anything? Does he need anything? He does not wish for anything anymore. That's the concept. There was a really fat wife that talked to her husband. Someone said that a woman in her 20s is like a spring bed, and a 40-year-old woman is like tatami. That's Nihongo, right? <laughs> Forty-year-old woman. It's like tatami. Is that really true? How about me? And then the husband said, "Of course you're not tatami. You're spring bed, but the springs are broken." So women in her twenties are like it's like a spring bed. Not forty, okay. A woman of sixty years old is like a tatami. A joke by Dharma Sister Linda. Linda Chung, that we have such good technology these days that you can lift your skin. The master also wants to have that done because I have wrinkles. You can lift your skin upward to smoothen your wrinkles. Or you can have some injections, Botox, Botox injection, and then uh, the wrinkles would be smoothed out. And in lifting the wrinkles, if you see wrinkles, there is a screw over here, and you can just turn on the screw, and the skin would be lifted behind the ears. And if you see wrinkles, you turn the screw, and then the wrinkles disappear. That's great. But if you s turn it too much, because you want to have tight skin, then your nipples would be lifted toward your cheeks. The other day, I watched TV, and there, there's someone that has two nipples that grows on her feet. It must be that she's lifted her skin too much, and then there are two nipples on the bottom of her feet. So it's too loose. That's, this is a joke. A woman asked her family doctor, So doctor, where is my heart? Oh, it's easy. Just it's right below on your left breast. And then this lady point a gun toward her heart. And she did not die, but uh, the knee broke because she's old that her breast droop all the way to the knee. 
<laughs> I was talking about the difference between tatami and spring bed. That the spring bed has uh, has springs, and tatami is hard. That the verse of the Zen master Wolun is hard and stiff, like tatami, and the verse of the sixth patriarch has springs. It has uh, resilience. So enlightenment is like this. It's like spring baths. It's not restricted. It's not frame. It's not always like this. It's not like cutting and stopping and and the real Buddha nature is the ultimate truth. It has resilience. So apart from the ultimate truth, it's dualistic. It's a relative. So it's like laws that uh, you have to do good, you cannot lie, uh, you cannot be too greedy, and you cannot have anger and aggression. So that's precepts, like Buddhist precepts, you should refrain from killing, killing, stealing, can, you cannot uh, have adultery, you cannot lie, you cannot be intoxicated because then you would lose control over your mind. Those are all precepts. Those are all tatami. That's hard ways. In the beginning, you should use this hard and stiff and strict ways. But when you generate your bodhicitta, you gain resilience. See, resiliency then you become the spring bed. It has resilience. You can drink alcohol a little bit. Just drink a little bit. But you cannot get drunk, because if you get drunk, you would harm your body. You can steal. Then you steal the words or the contents of the sutras and put them in your brain. See, that would be fine. That's resilience. You can copy the articles of Grand Masters and to use it as shooting an arrow. I cannot say that you're wrong. And it makes sense, but you're just missing a point. Because you copy from my book, of course I say it's right. Of course it makes sense. Because you copy from a sutra, of course that's correct. But you need to put it into real practice. Because you copy, you steal from the sutras or from grandmaster's books, that means you still have diligence. A true adultery is fine too. That's fine. For the lady practitioners. But if you have been ordained as monks or nuns, then you just sleep on tatami. No more spring beds. You have to sleep on a hard bed, not the soft one. That's the precepts. Is it okay to kill? Sure. If you kill a robber or criminal, which is the criminal of the greed, anger, and delusion, so it's okay to kill. You kill your delusion, your destructive thoughts, of course you can kill them. So it's okay to lie too. 
How can you say you can't? Let, let you taste the sweet of honey and to guide you onto the Buddhist path. Give you candy to entice you onto the path. Because just like to children, you don't know any better. We give you candies, like this wish-fulfilling wheel, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, to let her turn the wheel. Oh, wow, I have responses. My wish is fulfilled. Then I would come to listen to the Buddha Dharma. Then that's like a... a it's like a fraud, like a fraud treatment. But does it mean that all your wishes would be fulfilled 100%? If yes, then those who had polio ever since her youth would be cured. Then I would ask her, uh, ask the Kuan Yin Bodhisattva to fulfill that wish. But is that doable? That sounds like a fraud. So every male master is handsome and female master is all very beautiful. I cannot use any of them as an analogy. But if I say, you are a wish-fulfilling wheel, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, and the fact that I'm here today Tomorrow, I want to become the fame model, Nizilin. Oh no, Amitabha. Even Kuan Yin Bodhisattva can recite Amitabha Buddha. Sorry, I was lying to you. There's no way for you to become the fame model tomorrow. So I cannot say that this is a fraud. He is a fraud, the Kuan Yin. Because when he appeared to me, it was very beautiful, very perfect, always youthful. It's, it's ten. It's a perfect beauty. But mentally, mentally, you can train yourself to be like the perfect Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. But in terms of the world, you can't divert yourself to become youthful like before. Like my aunt, Huang Xuehua, Mrs. Huang Xuehua is my aunt. When she was young, she was really like snowflake, because her name means snowflake. It's fair and sweet and soft like the snowflake. When I was young and I saw my aunt, I cannot say that I drool, but I really think that my aunt was beautiful. She, she was even more beautiful than my mom. My mother was the older sister, and she's the younger sister. Look at her age now, she's still beautiful. But 
But today, if she told the wish fulfilling jewel Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, uh, that if my nephew, if my nephew told me, my nephew told me that all my wishes would be fulfilled, so now I would make a maze, make a vow, so return me to my youth, in my, like, in my twenties, and then I had a one night sleep, and then the next morning, I look at the mirror, my heart is still beautiful, but my look stays the same. So that's why these five precepts refrain from killing, stealing, adultery, lying, being intoxicated. These are all precepts, but it has resilience. So resilience is about Huynan's verse. If it's very hard and stiff, like never to kill, never to steal, never to have any adultery, never to lie, never to get drunk, never to drink any alcohol, then that's like tatami. So I don't know whether you would understand this explanation. When I was young, I was afraid of taking tests. So the professor from Academia Seneca must laugh at me. His study must be really good and always um, was first in his study. That's why he became the head of the Academia Seneca. He was the PhD in the uh, mm, in in physics and uh, on the neurophysics. So he must be really good at his studies, not like me. My English was very bad because I was slacking in studying English at the college. At that time, I thought, I don't need to go anywhere. I just stay in Taiwan. Why do I need to go to America or Europe or Australia? I would not go to these places. But then, I went to these places. But those who said, who wanted to go abroad, stayed in Taiwan. So that's why my English is poor. Why? Because I just want to speak native language and be a native. I don't want to learn a foreign language. Every time I have to take the t English test, everyone work hard and studied hard and earned a PhD degree, that's already hard enough, and then he even become the head of the university. So at the college, I was scared of test. Every time, now there's a lot of multiple choices. That the questions and the answers are separate and there are multiple choices. And in taking tests in the past, around me they all f filled in their answers. And then the examiner said, oh no. Oh, and then one of the students, the, the 
the gifted students say, oh no, I feel in the wrong space. And uh, around them, around him, the area of the, oh no, everybody, because everybody copying him. So everybody may get the same score, but one of them is by his own means, and the other ones are not. And the one who get the score by his own means, that's the spring bed, and the rest are not, because they were just uh, copying from him. Actually, my my scores were not bad. I was praised by the uh, class leader earlier or before. Actually, I was just like everybody else. I was the one who cried out, oh no. So that's different. Simu really likes English, so her English is very good. And my English is really bad. In the past, Tusukuan is in Chinese library. Tashi is university. So it's business. So this So this are long uh, a word made of many syllables. Now I know but in the past at that time I did not. So in order to explain, it's quite difficult to explain these verses by Zen Master Wu Lun and the Six Patriarch. That's why I use a lot of analogies. There are some similarities but also differences. One is to bind you and the other one is to go beyond nature. So I say one is tatami and the other one is spring bed. One is alive and the other one is dead. So the two are different. One is about enlightenment and the other one is not. So we walk the path from non-enlightenment to enlightenment. So in the past, I often said, if Master Qinghai is enlightened, then she can return to lay lady life. She can put on cosmetics and costumes to be like celestial goddess. That's the behaviors of the enlightened one. It's not restricted at all. That uh, enlightened one looks like a madman, like a crazy. But if externally you are like that, yet if internally you do not have the uh, the enlightenment of the six patriarch, then that's fraud, that's a lie. I don't know whether you would understand this kind of explanation or not. If I have talked a lot about it. So that's why I say, if I return to lady life, or if I wear my swim trunk, sitting here, 
or even if I sit here in nude, in nudity, or create um, create uh, really bad news, crazy news. It's already uh, uh, beyond the uh, Buddhist tradition. But if internally he is truly enlightened, then of course he could do all that. It's almost 5.30, time for dinner, oh money going home. So let's give another round of applause as our gratitude to His Holiness.